Let's talk about shoes. So when I first started running a couple years ago, I used one shoe for everything, and I mean everything. However, as I progressed in my running career and learned more about the sport as a whole, I found out about a shoe rotation, which is basically the different types of shoes that you use throughout a week or in your training cycle. As you guys can see, I kind of got carried away with it. Right in front of me are all the shoes that encompass all of my training outside of racing. Today, I'm gonna be talking about each of the shoes and how I use them, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and my overall impressions about these shoes. Without further ado, this is my shoe rotation as a D3 runner. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, so that was loud. So the first shoe we got here is the Nike Pegasus 39. This shoe weighs out at about 11 ounces, just over. So this is for size 13. I know I have very big feet. So what do I use these shoes for? The Nike Pegasus shoes are kind of the do it all. If you were gonna get one shoe for all of your training, this would probably be the one to go for if you're looking for something cheap. In the summer, I've been using it for aerobic runs and even long runs. So pros about these shoes. For one, these shoes are really cheap. Once the new models come out, you can get these for incredibly cheap prices. They're also really dependable and sturdy. When I wear these, at least in my first impressions, they're not anything crazy or flashy, but they get the job done and that's why they've been called a workhorse shoe by many. However, some cons about these shoes is that they are a bit tight in the toe box area. I don't have wide feet per se, but my toes tend to spread out in the shoe and this kind of pushes them together. One more thing is that the shoe is what I would say boring and by that i mean it does its job but it's not the most exciting shoe in my rotation if i were to put these on a tier list i'd probably rate them as like a b tier shoe i don't think nike wants these to be their best shoes so yeah b tier so next up we have the nike zoom x invincible twos and the nike zoom x invincible threes this one has 534 miles on them which is why I bought these because I plan to switch over to these and they'll serve the same purpose. So these have zero miles. The Nike Zoom X Invincibles are a heavier shoe with the red ones here, the twos weighing in at about 13 ounces and the ones on the left weighing in at just under 13 ounces. When it comes to usage for the Nike Zoom X Invincible twos, I think it's pretty clear that they are not meant for anything fast. These are my easy day shoes. That is all I use them for. I do know people that like to use these for long runs, but personally, they're not the long run shoe for me. The pros about these shoes, these shoes are so comfortable. It feels like you are running on clouds, especially after a hard workout or long run and you just need to be recovering. These shoes get the job done better than any other shoe I have ever tried. They also have better durability than I expected. They are called the Invincibles, so it should make sense. The wear on these through 500 miles has been pretty good and I expect to take these to 600 miles before I switch over to the threes. They aren't a perfect shoe. They're heavy shoes and they do take up a lot of space in bags. When I'm traveling or, you know, carrying these to practice, they're going to feel heavy, but the purpose of them is to be comfortable. So you kind of have to make that compromise. I'll put them both at eight tier just based off my experiences with the twos. If anyone really wants a nice easy day shoe, these are the shoes to go for. Right here, I have the Saucony Endorphin 2s. Right now, they have 163 miles on them, and they weigh in at just under 9 ounces. This has served me well for tempo workouts, long runs, aerobic runs, all of that. They have a uh, nylon plate in the middle as opposed to a carbon fiber plate, which is why they are cheaper. So it gives you a bit of that snappiness and responsiveness when you're running at a quick pace. The pros about these shoes is that they are always on sale. Like, trust me, I think they're on the threes now for the speeds, so you're never gonna have to pay full price. Also, with the forward roll technology in these shoes, when you're walking in them, you can kind of feel it. It kind of, you land, and then your foot will just naturally roll. It's kind of like a rocker. They're also incredibly versatile. Like I was saying, this is kind of another do-it-all shoe, and this is kind of my main go-to workout shoe. This shoe doesn't really have many cons. I would say the outsole 
is a little bit thin so in the winter it gets slippery and then also this isn't really a con towards the shoe itself but it does get outperformed by the vaporfly i would put these up at a tier with the nike zoom x invincibles simply because they're incredibly versatile they feel great on my feet saucony endorphin speed twos great shoe would highly recommend Okay, this is the shoe that probably everyone has been looking forward to. Of course, I'm talking about the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent Twos. The Nike Vaporflies are incredibly light, coming in at under nine ounces for a size 13 shoe. For me, I got these during the winter and I started to use them in the indoor season and the outdoor season. I like using these for workouts that I knew were gonna be more challenging. Um, for example, like 10K pace work or longer tempos, you do not have to do as much work in these shoes. And that is due to the carbon fiber plate that is runs throughout. You can't see it in the outside, but it runs throughout the entire shoe. So some pros about these shoes, Honestly, everything about this shoe is a pro. Lightweight, it is responsive, it helps with recovery, but also there's a psychological benefit when I'm wearing these shoes. I don't know how to explain it, but when I'm wearing these shoes for a workout, I just know I'm gonna hit my paces and feel good doing it. There are no cons about the shoe itself. However, if I were to pick some, I would say the price, it is expensive at $250 retail and they don't last as long as a daily trainer would. I'll probably take these to 200 or 300 miles max. That being said, these shoes are easily an S tier, no doubt about it. These shoes are like magic, putting them on for the first time and I really wish I could re-experience that. When it comes down to it, you really don't need this many pairs of shoes. And in fact, if you're a casual runner, I would not recommend spending this much money on all of these type of shoes. However, for me, I do it every day and I wanna get as fast as possible. Another part of it is that I like the variety of having all the shoes. Instead of wearing the same shoe every single day and getting bored with it, I can wear different shoes and be excited about that. I also believe that for daily trainers, having multiple pairs does help with injury prevention. And since I've started doing my shoe rotation about a year or a year and a half ago, I have had no problem with injuries or anything like that. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I wanna keep making videos like this just to keep the content new and fresh on the channel as opposed to just doing vlogs. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this. That is all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.